Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff, and in this video, we're going to be discussing a special test that's used in the assessment for lumbar instability, and that is the brace and drop test. Now, this is a test used to determine the effect of core stabilization on potential lumbar instability. So the test is centered around the idea that if the lumbar spine is unstable and you give it a shock, a physical shock, kind of jolt it or jostle it a little bit, it would reproduce the patient's pain. And so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna give it a jostle. So to perform this test, the patient will stand on their toes, okay, as you see right here. And I'm just standing like this. I could not hold on if I wanted to, if my balance was good enough. You can use a little bit of upper extremity support for balance, but they're just standing and they're on their toes. And then what you do is you have the patient rapidly drop their heels forcefully to the floor. And that impact of the heels hitting the floor is gonna create that jostling effect right there. And the PT assesses for subjective reports of pain. Now, if we have some kind of lumbar instability, what do we do to correct that? Well, if you look at the low back pain classification system, the treatment approach is core stabilization. So if we wanna determine if core stability has an impact on the patient's pain, then we need to teach them how to brace the core and then do this same test. And so what I typically have patients do for this is I have them take the first web space on either hand and put it on their sides right below uh, that bottom rib, okay? So you're on the fleshy part. And then what you want the patient to do is, is push their abdomen out to the sides against those web spaces without the belly coming forward. Sometimes people will just like do like a Valsalva maneuver. That's not what we're doing. We want the patient to brace the core against those web spaces. And once they can feel, once they can feel the abdomen pressing out against those, they have effectively learned how to stabilize their core, stabilize the low back. And so what we do is we repeat this test with the core braced. So just pretend here, I'm bracing the core, rapidly drop the heels to the ground, there's that jostling, and we reassess for subjective reports of pain. Now a positive test here is gonna be a decrease in their familiar pain with the core braced compared to the core unbraced. And that familiar pain could simply be isolated pain in the low back. It could be a central low back pain issue. It could be involved with radiating pain down one of the legs, like a sciatica or a femoral nerve type of situation, okay? Whatever their familiar pain is, if it's reduced with the core braced, first of all, that implies there is some degree of instability, but it also implies that core stability is gonna be an important part of their rehabilitation. Now, if a patient's instability is pretty mild, um, it's not very severe, it's not very irritable, um, they could still have instability and just this isn't enough impact to catch that. So what you do is you take it up a notch and instead of just having their heel come off the ground at impact, you actually have them leave the ground with a jump. So very simple, you just have the patient jump and then that impact where they then land back on their heels that provides more impact force, which may provide enough, enough of that jostling effect to provoke their symptoms. And again, you do the same thing. You do it first without the core bracing, and then you do it with the core bracing and determine if the pain is reduced with the core braced. And if it is reduced, that implies some type of instability and also that core stability will be an important part of their treatment. So hopefully this video gave you some good information on the brace and drop test. Please make sure to like my video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification button for notifications for all videos in the future. Thank you so much.